In previous tutorials, I've shown you how to make all the different chess pieces and the board. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to put them all together. The starting point for the tutorial is the end point from the chessboard tutorial. You can make the board yourself or download the file from my website. In the view menu, toggle quad view. In the view menu, view all. Select the chessboard, click the modifiers button and apply both array modifiers. In the object menu, Transform Origin to Geometry. Click the Object Properties and set the X location and the Y location of the chessboard to zero. In the View menu, View Selected. The first piece I'm going to bring into the scene is the pawn. File Append. Go to the folder where the file is saved select it, go into the object folder, select it and append. The first thing I'm going to look at is the size or scale of the piece in the view menu toggle quad view. Use the tip of the blue arrow to move the piece up just above the board. In the top view zoom in with the mouse wheel. I want to change its location but even though the appended object has an orange line around it, it is not the selected item. Make sure the pawn is selected and set its X location to 1 and its Y location to 1. So how big should the pawn be compared with the chessboard? We're looking at the World Chess Federation's website, their standards for chess equipment. For chess pieces, the king's height should be 9.5 centimeters. The diameter of the king's base should measure 40 to 50% of its height. My king is 41%. The size of the other pieces should be proportionate to their height and form, so they're not too specific there. And for the chess boards, referring to 2.2, the size of the square should be twice the diameter of the pawn's base. The diameter of the pawn is the same as the width of the square, so we need to scale by a factor of 0.5. Press S to scale, 0.5 and enter. In the view menu, toggle quad view. Change from perspective to orthographic, shortcut key, numpad 5. Change the view to the front view. Zoom in with the mouse wheel. Change shading to solid. To place the chess piece vertically, either use the tip of the blue arrow or press G to grab Z for the Z axis and move it down. For flat bottomed objects resting on flat surfaces, placing by hand gives good results, especially if you zoom in. But I'm going to show you another method. I'm going to use the built-in physics engine to drop the piece to ground, use the tip of the blue arrow to move the piece up. Click the physics tab, click add active, click play and the piece falls with gravity, pause and rewind. To make the piece collide with the board without the board falling itself, select the board, click add passive and play and pause. The collision bounds have left quite a large gap. This can be reduced by clicking the physics button and reducing the sensitivity margin to 0.01. Now when we rewind and play and pause we get a much smaller gap. To set the new location of the chess piece select it, click object properties these are the old location values. Click Apply Transform and they are updated. Rewind and Remove Physics. Change the view to the top view and zoom back with the mouse wheel. The squares are two blender units wide so the X positions are 1, 3, 5 and 7 
and minus 1, minus 3, minus 5, and minus 7, and the y positions are the same. To move the pawn to this square here, set its x location to minus 7 and its y location to 5. To set up the material for the pawn, click the Material button, click the Browse Material button, and select the white marble material that was used for the squares. I don't actually want to use the material, I just want to rename it. Once renamed, click X to unlink it. Click the New Material button. Now I can call the new material white and set the diffuse colour, well I'm going to leave the red, green and blue values at 0.8. The obvious way of having eight pawns across the board is to add an array modifier. Click the modifiers button, add modifier array, set the relative offset to two and up the count to eight. To bring the next piece into the scene, we have to repeat the procedures starting with File Append. Go to the folder where the piece is saved, select the file, go into the Object folder. I forgot to rename the cylinder I made the rook from, select the cylinder and Append. Change the view to the front view. Zoom in with the mouse wheel, press S to scale, 0.5 and enter. Use the tip of the blue arrow to move the rook just above the board. Notice that even though I've moved the piece, it's still not the selected object. Make sure it's selected. Add active physics, press play, pause, apply the transform and remove the physics and rewind. Change the view to the top view. Zoom back with the mouse wheel, click the object properties, set the X location to minus seven and the Y location to seven and give the model a more meaningful name. Click the material button, click the browse material button and select white. We need to make a copy of the rook it's not worth adding an array modifier for one copy. I'm going to duplicate the rook, but do I do ordinary duplicate or duplicate linked? Duplicate linked means that if we change the original, the duplicate will change as well, which is what we want. Hold down the Alt key, press D and enter. Click the object properties and set the X location to plus seven. The procedures for the other pieces are the same. I'm just going to highlight one or two differences. When I made my knight, I linked a black material to it. I also didn't set shading to smooth. Make sure the knight is selected and click smooth. Click the material button. Click the browse material button. I'm going to take the opportunity to rename the black marble material. Click the Browse Material button and select White. The origin needs to be moved. Transform origin to center of mass. And I found the scale factor for my knight was about 0.7. I'm only going to summarize the next few steps because I've already covered them with the pawn and the rook. Drop the piece to the board. Place the piece on its square and make a linked duplicate. I have jumped ahead and added the bishop, queen and king, remembering that the white king goes on a white square and the black king goes on a black square. Changing the view to the back view, I scaled all the pieces by a factor of 0.5 except for the knight which I scaled by a factor of 0.7. Looking at the bishop, it looks a bit big compared with the pieces either side, so I've made a version where I have scaled the bishop by a factor of 0.45. To make the black pieces, we'll have to make full duplicates if we want to change the colour. Select the pawn, hold down shift, press D and enter, and change its Y location to minus 5. Click the material button. 
click the add material button call the new material black and set the diffuse color all three values to 0 0.02 Select the night, duplicate, shift D and enter. Click the browse material button and select black. Click the object properties and set the Y location of the duplicate to minus seven. The night is the one piece that has to be rotated. Press R to rotate 180 and enter. Create a linked duplicate, Alt D and enter and set its X location to 5. I have jumped ahead and duplicated the other pieces. That's the end of the tutorial. The board, the pieces and the finished set can be downloaded from my website www.ianscott888.com Thanks for watching and goodbye.